Okay, Alexander, let's uh, talk about Prince Andrew. Let's revisit Prince Andrew and what's going on with Ghislaine and Epstein, all that stuff. Um, Andrew got served, didn't he? He got served and then he didn't show up. So, uh, and he had, was his excuse correct or, or what's going on here? Because he's obviously he's avoiding, you know, going to court. Well, but, but, you know, it is Prince Andrew. And it's going to be hard to get him into court, I imagine. Well, indeed. But can I just say, I think it was a very, very unwise move from a procedural point of view. Now, you know, this is a case which has been brought against him in the United States. He is based in Britain. You have to get permission from relevant authorities and relevant courts in various countries if you serve out of your own jurisdiction. So if the claim is brought in the United States, there's a particular procedure that has to be followed in Britain in order to accept to carry out proper service in Britain. That That is the procedure, that is the law. But always a court has the discretion to go to cut through the procedure. And I have to say this, and you know, I've been involved in many, many cases like this, many cases in which there's service out of the jurisdiction. When there is a particularly well-known and important defendant, it goes down incredibly badly in a court. When that defendant tries to evade turning up in court and avoid service by hiding behind procedural de devices, it creates a terrible impression. And that is exactly what Andrew did. So I think this is a mistake. I think he should have certainly accepted service. I'm not saying he necessarily needed to go to the United States. He's got his lawyers to go there, but he needed to take this case on. He needed to deal with it directly. He needed to actually address the issues and put his case across and do it do it clearly and well. His lawyers, by the way, say, are now saying that the case has absolutely no basis, no legal foundation. Well, they've undermined that argument by trying to uh, hide behind uh, service issues because it makes it look to any judge that the defendant is trying to hide behind procedure instead of dealing with the substantive issues. So it was a big mistake. I don't know who made the mistake. I don't know whether it was Andrew himself or whether he was, uh, whether it was his lawyers who made the mistake, but it was certainly a mistake. Can, can you elaborate a little bit as to what's the, uh, yeah. what were the lawyers saying for him not showing? Like what was the, the, right. the exact I mean, reason? I mean, if, if, you, if you issue proceedings in the United States, you have to obtain permission from the High Court in London to serve the proceedings on the defendant in Britain. And there are mechanisms, there are special devices about how that service is supposed to be executed. Now, when I talk about service, it means putting the document in the hands of the defendant in a kind of way that the defendant has to acknowledge it has been served on him. The fact that the defendant may know about the proceedings, may know all about the proceedings, doesn't necessarily mean that he has been served with them in accordance with his proper procedure. The reason this is done is, is because all states insist upon their, unless they're members of the European Union, uh, uh, insist on service provisions as part of their sovereignty. Every country has its own legal system, its own sovereign jurisdiction administered by its own courts. So you can't just issue a filing in the United States and just come along to Britain and serve it on someone because that is contrary to the sovereignty of Britain of the country where this person lives. So you have to use this procedure as an acknowledgement of sovereignty. But at the same time, courts are very practical places in many, in many instances and judges are very practical people. They have discretion to cut the corners. And any wise defendant, especially a wise defendant as eminent as Prince Andrew, knows that it is in their interests to cooperate with the service process, to say, for example, to the defendant, to the claimant, 
uh, uh, Virginia Dufry in this case, that, you know, I'm prepared to come along and attend the court, the court in the United States. So you don't need to go through all this elaborate process that you need to do. I'm happy to accept service. I'm happy to turn up. I'm happy to make my case there. Let's put all the complicated procedure to one side. Doing that buys you goodwill with the judge. It buys you goodwill with the court. You show that you're a reasonable, sensible person and that you've got nothing to hide. If you, on the other hand, hide behind the procedure, then the judge concludes, well, you're being evasive, you're not cooperating with the court, you're showing disrespect to the court, and it works against you. So that was the mistake Andrew made. Wouldn't uh, Andrew's lawyers, I imagine the best lawyers that royalty can buy, <laughs> wouldn't they know this? I mean, why would they? why would they go along with this? Why would they consult him to do this? It, it doesn't... It doesn't add up unless they're maybe they're trying to buy time for a political uh, favor or, or solution there. I, I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. Yeah. Legally, it sounds like this is something the court, that his lawyers would have easily dealt with and known. Absolutely. I mean, it set it set the proceedings off on a bad on a on a bad footing for, for from Andrew's point of view, and one does wonder. And of course, one wonders about what advice Andrew's been given. Was he advised to cooperate with service, and did he ignore that advice? Was that was that why he did that? Was it his decision which he imposed on his lawyers? If his lawyers didn't agree with that decision, why didn't they tell uh, Andrew that they thought it was such a mistake that they couldn't go on acting for him in that case? I mean, that would have been an option. But I can't believe that the lawyers don't understand the tactics and the damage done to their client by hiding behind service issues, uh, by hiding behind procedural questions. So I can I only conclude that either they're doing they're doing what you suggested, trying to spin this out and buy time in order to find some way out for their client, in which case that doesn't say very much about the quality of his case. Or alternatively, they have a very difficult client on their hand, Prince Andrew, who uh, doesn't want to turn up in court, doesn't want to fight the case, is nervous, perhaps, about fighting the case. And they haven't yet reached that stage, which lawyers always find themselves when they're acting for that kind of defendant, whether they want to go on acting for that kind of defendant or whether they have to tell that defendant, look, we're very sorry, we can't help you anymore because you're not heeding our advice. So it's one or the other, and one wonders which it is. Yeah, there could be an element of uh, a fear from, from Prince Andrew, obviously, but there could also be that element of uh, of ego and hubris and you know, I'm an elite. I'm a royal, for God's sakes. I am a royal. Who is who is anyone to to summon me to court? There could, there could be that element there, which I could imagine is there. And so, you know, he might be saying, you know, I, I'm not going to go to court, you know, for, for any reason. I'm a royal. I'm above the law. And uh, I can do as I want, when I want. And so, you know, just make this go away. Uh, could there... Could the order be for the lawyers to try and strike a deal, a payoff? Is that in the making? Because this is the royal family, right? They have immense political power. They have immense financial power. And yet they're hiding behind what appears to be a, a technicality. Yes. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't add up. Well, it doesn't add up. Can I just say, first of all, that your attitude, what you described as Andrew's attitude, I think is spot on. I think he does have that kind of arrogance. I think a lot of the members of the elite in Britain do. The problem is being a royal in Britain is an enormous asset if you find yourself in court proceedings. Being a royal in the United States with its Republican traditions might not be such an asset. In fact, it might be in some places even a liability. And I don't think Andrew understands that perhaps, and perhaps his lawyers haven't explained it to him. But certainly, irrespective of whether it was arrogance or evasiveness and fear, or, and fear, or sheer stupidity, or whatever the reason was, I think this was a mistake. Now, in my opinion, the right things for the lawyers to do, 
the absolute priority of what they need to do is to settle this case and to settle it fast. And that means negotiating with Virginia Jufri and her lawyers a settlement. And it will have to be a big settlement. This is irrespective of what Andrew may or may not have done. I think that's absolutely in their interests to achieve and to get a confidentiality agreement attached to this settlement. I say that because I cannot see any trial of this case doing Andrew anything but immense damage, even if he is able to persuade the court in the United States that Virginia's claims are false. I expect that so many things will come out about his history that I think that he will come out of it an extremely damaged man. So I think in his interests, and I'm sure that's the advice he's been given, he needs to settle with Virginia Jufri and her lawyers very fast. And that mean, may mean a very substantial payout and um, it's going to be interesting to see whether, of course, she's even prepared to settle. I suspect she probably is. I suspect her lawyers will advise her to, and I suspect that's where this is going to go. But the fact is that in that negotiation, he started on a bad footing. He's already antagonised the judge. He's been made to look ev evasive. The price for that deal, when it comes, is going to be even higher than it would otherwise have been if he'd acted reasonably and had cooperated. Right. You're talking, you're always talking from the best interest of the world, for Absolutely. example. I mean, we would like to see justice be done. We would like to, I, I would like nothing more than to, to report on this case, to see everything come out. God, would that be a gift? But we live in reality. Yeah, right. We live in reality. And, yeah, we live in reality, and uh, I think we we've known for a while now that we're not going to get to the the truth to to all no. of this stuff that's that's happened, all, to all of it. And um, the royals, in their best interest, they need to make this go away for the royals' yeah. best interest. Yeah. Otherwise, this is going to uh, is going to be a real painful path for for Andrew and for the family. So. I imagine the queen, I imagine the whole family is is going to give everything they have to bail Andrew out. And Andrew knows that. Absolutely. Am I summing it up correctly? You're, you're, it's going to be a heavy price, but the Raws really don't have a choice, do they? They don't have a choice. They have, they have no choice at all. And uh, Andrew's elder brother, Prince Charles, who's the heir to the throne, has all but said as much. And that's absolutely right. Now, can I just say your, your, your first point that, um, you know, this isn't, this is a deal. It's not justice. <laughs> I mean, it's not, it's not, uh, you know, uh, a, a full exposure of the evidence. It's not us knowing exactly what happened and who was responsible. Well, th that is absolutely true. But remember, this is a civil claim. So, um, it's, it's something that can be settled. And I think it's, what the lawyers ought to be doing and they ought to be pulling out every stop to achieve that because as i said i can't imagine a trial here doing andrew any good whatsoever it can only do him damage it can only do the royal family damage it can only do the monarchy in britain enormous damage so they ha they have to do that they will have to pay a big price and the fact is that as for andrew himself he has to accept the fact that he is, in terms of his public reputation, a ruined man. I mean, nobody, nobody anymore is going to think that he is an entirely innocent party in this, in this, any, uh, in this matter. I mean, irrespective of what actually did happen, which, you know, I'm not going to try and guess. Lots of people are. But, I mean, he, he has himself, because of his proximity to Epstein, Epstein, his decision to remain Epstein's friend for so long, the photographs which have appeared, that disastrous interview he gave on News, Newsnight, all of these reasons, he is a discredited person. And the royal family know it, and everyone else does, and I'm afraid he's going to have to accept it. So there has to be a big payoff. He has to retire and disappear from public life and accept the, accept the fact that he will have to live 
from uh, a, you know, a comfortable obscurity and no longer be an active member of the royal family as he once was. If he's able to escape with a deal, then he's a lucky man also. Because, of course, if he wasn't Prince Andrew, to be straightforward about it, I, I would have thought that we wouldn't be looking at a civil suit. We'd be looking at a criminal investigation. And that cannot be bargained away in that kind of way. You can't just pay money to people to uh, 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 you know, stop a criminal case because that is, a, that is essentially an attempt to buy off criminal justice, which you simply can't do. Yeah. Yeah. So the royal family will, will put all their power into making this case go away. And then they're going to make Andrew go away, I guess, yeah. disappear. Exactly. Like exactly. He'll be comfortable, exactly. though, but he'll be persona he'll be non grata. He'll be persona non grata. Exactly. And, and, and I mean, he has to accept that. That's the reality. It's a comfortable life that he will have, but it will not be the life in public, in the public view that he's enjoyed up to now. It's really interesting where it's like the royal family is, is, is whittling away. You're going to be left with, uh, with Charles and, and, and William. I mean, at the end of the day, isn't it correct? Well, that's entirely correct. I mean, you know, the, the, the royal family, when I, when I first came to Britain in the 60s, I mean, it, it's difficult to imagine today, but I mean, the royal family was a huge institution. I mean, at the end of every news bulletin, we'd have a special bulletin. I can remember this about what the royal family was doing. I mean, it seems extraordinary today, but, you know, if they were opening a supermarket somewhere, you know, there, there would be all the BBC, the BBC would be there to cover it. And it would, it would be on the news and we'd be having comments about the kind of clothes they were wearing and all sorts of things. And, you know, the reverence and the deference that surrounded them was astonishing. All that has gone and I mean, they brought it about actually by their own, uh, you know, by their own actions. And the Queen herself retains the respect of her people. Charles, to a lesser degree, but I think most people accept that he's a well intentioned man, if not always perhaps a very wise one. William, well, people don't know him so well, but he also seems to be a serious person overall. But other than that, as I said, they've all either disgraced themselves or ruined themselves or damaged themselves in all sorts of ways. And they've left the, the monarchy and the royal family far weaker than it was. I mean, you know, compared to how it was then when I first came to Britain in the 60s and how it is now. I mean, you just, you just can't imagine the change that there's been. Yeah, it feels like it started as a big family and now it's just a couple of, of people, yeah. you know. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Yeah. Interesting stuff. All right. Uh, we'll leave it there. The Duran.locals.com. Bitshoot Rumble, Super U, Odyssey, and uh, Bitshoot Rumble, Super U, and Odyssey. Yeah. Okay. You'll find our videos there as well. And go to the Duran shop, 10% off. I think you got a Union Jack. Yeah. I've got oh, a no, Union Australia. Jack there, and I've got Australia here, don't you know, a country which is going through hard times, but which we always have great f affection for in Britain. All right, we'll uh, leave it there. There's a 10% code, 10% uh, off if you use the code Real News underneath this video. Take care.